What's up, Meta Junkies? It's your favorite neighborhood gamer, David E. Beats, and it's time to talk about the meta behind Junk Rat. Now I know what you're saying. There ain't no meta to Junk Rat. He just stand in the back and spam grenades. You wrong. Junk Rat is a very dynamic hero with the ability to land not only random spam kills, but also very targeted, precise hits and kills. How? It's actually quite easy. Stick around, you wrong. And let's get into the best ways to play Junk Rat. A large number of y'all play Junk Rat as a backline spammer. But here's one thing you forget he does a shit ton of damage. His grenades do nearly 40 points of damage per grenade, 120 total damage depending on the distance, and that's splash damage. Therefore, if you got a competent healer on your team, hit hit healers, you know I'm talking to you, you should be able to jump on the point, throw grenades at your opponent, and take them out before they can even turn around. Here's some numbers if you don't believe me. Junkrat's fire rate is 1.66 grenades per second, meaning that he's doing max damage to any one player at 199.2 points. Meaning that he's doing more damage with two grenades as Tracer does with her entire clip in two whole seconds. He also drops bombs when he dies, meaning that he deals 50 points per bomb for six bombs, totaling 300 points of damage. And lastly, my personal favorite of course, being a junk rat main and all that, a concussion mine travels at over 17.5 meters per second and does 120 damage on a direct hit. So to take out any non-tank character with less than 300 HP, you just need one regular grenade hit and a concussion mine hit and they gone. Now you asking me, well that's all well and good, but I can't stay alive long enough to do any of that. Or, sounds like you're relying on the healers to pocket you. And I get that. But there is a way to stay alive and be in the middle of a team fight with no supports backing you. Now I ain't telling you to go 1v6, cause that's fucking dumb. And you're a shit player for even attempting it. But what I am saying is that if you're in the middle of a team fight, there is a way to take advantage of the chaos to deliver some precision kills. When I play games, I like to role play as the character mentally. I feel like it gives me better insight into how the developers wanted the character to be played, or even better, if the character was real, how they would solve this challenge. Therefore, I got a series of strats I use on different types of maps. I'm gonna be honest guys, I fucking hate flankers. You're diverting resources away from the team on a gamble that you're not gonna be seen. It's best to put the firepower up front and push the enemy back. Therefore, on payload maps, this is my main strat. As a junk rat main, I either take the left or the right lane, but I make sure to stay in range of the team to watch for any ganks in the light. From the right or the left lane, I fire into the enemy team, waiting for an opening. If they have any shield deterrence, I focus my attention to spamming those down to a pulp. Once I break a shield or turn, however, I'm diving in. Learning how to aim with junk rat is key. After some time, you can predict the bounce your bombs will make when you shoot them, allowing you to make some cool setups. Goal is to take out one enemy, then your team will rally around you. Remember what I said before about one regular bomb? Did a concussion mine? Yeah, do that. Or any squishy you can find, quickly, and get in their face. Like the whites of their pixelated 4K rendered eyes. The reason you get in close is that you get a pick and your mob will blow you back to safety, sparing you from certain retaliation. Repeat this process, without dying preferably, and your team will get the message and finish the rest. On Capture the Point or King of the Hill maps, my strat is largely the same, but with one key difference. Have you ever noticed that on all the Capture the Point maps, there's a health pack in the left or right lane that's easily accessible to the middle lane? If so, great job, you have eyes. Now, I have tested this for a while, and I found that if you focus on controlling access to that specific health pack, you have a much higher advantage of controlling the point. How? It's pretty easy. Even if the other team got healers, it's much more likely that they want to use that lane as a flanking and healing lane for their attackers. If you deny them access to this or punish them every time they use it, it gives you a huge advantage. 
For example, place a junk rat trap over that health pack if you can't access it regularly, like on Li Zhang Tower, to punish the enemy for healing. The large health pack heals for 250 points, and junk rat's trap hits them for a cool 100 meaning that they only net 120 health. And if they were critical already, that's not gonna be enough. It'll put them out of commission and waiting for the next health pack respawn in 15 seconds, which is better than killing an enemy with a respawn of eight seconds. If you're with a really good team, they'll catch on to this tactic and lads hit the trap enemies before the trap dismantles. Staggering the team spawn this way will lead to an easy victory. I've saved the best for last, the rip tire. Lately, it seems as if people are shooting these things left and right, making it harder to land that sweet, sweet full man kill and get play in the game. Therefore, I got some strats that I use to make sure I get the most value out of my rip tire. Firstly, I don't aim to get large kills with it. I use it primarily as a tank killer. The rip tire does over 600 points of damage direct and with a range of 60 to 600 points splash damage. I get more value and a sure shot to take out say a rampaging Winston or Roadhog with a direct hit than to go for a group kill and get shot down. Remember, staggering the enemy spawn leads to victory. Going for your own KD ratio gets you play, but you're probably going to lose. The more damage you do with Jump Rat, the faster his ultimate charges. If you play the way that I play, you'll be getting your ult from twice to four times a match, meaning that you can take out a large Reinhardt, remove their shield, get on point, get more picks, charge your ult again, and drop another rip tire into the team fight. Efficient junk rat players know what I'm talking about. Last but not least, make sure you're getting gold damage. If you're not, you haven't done nearly enough damage and you may stand to lose the game. So if you want to play better, then watch just better. And thanks for watching. Subscribe to get notified for our next video, which will be uploaded daily. And also, check out this cool playlist we put together of other best ways to play from other channels. And also, check out this other cool video too.